Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we are on the test server right now, and I want to present to you the team that I won the first event of the Deadwood Jedi's Faction Games events. And I want to show you the team that I used and how I did it. So I do want to give you a brief summary of the Faction Games. So if you head over to the DeadwoodJedi.com website, you'll be able to see the Faction Games section there. And if you click that, you'll see all the available events and my team is with Cold Brew Gaming and with Ivy League Gaming. So make sure to check them out as well and show them a lot of love and support. So that is my team and our team name is Team CSI. C for Cold Brew, S for Smiley, and I for Ivy League. So um, the first event that took place was Dragon and we won. We got first place, it was against YST and MTG Jedi. And make sure to check them out and show them a lot of love and support too. And yeah, we competed. I got the Dark Elves faction, MTG Jedi had High Elves faction, and YST had the Orcs faction. So, um, I mean, clearly I had an advantage to begin with, right? Because I have a bunch of Poisoners, they have no Poisoners at, at all, but I was still surprised at how well they did. But as far as my team, I mean, it was pretty clear how I was going to build my team and construct it. So it was going to be built around Zavia and Dark Ilk. So I do want to talk about the strategy that I went with. So when I first went with this composition, I was trying to build my team around just trying to get to the boss as fast as possible, of course. But once I get to the boss, I wanted everybody on my team to die except for one poisoner to just go head to head against the boss to, um, I guess, like just let the dragon tick, tick, tick and just die immediately. That's what I was trying to go for, kind of like a dragon 25 strategy. And it just didn't work out for me because make everybody like with low HP as possible and tr still try to do as much damage as possible. It just, it didn't work out for me that way. So I went with a different approach to make everybody really, really strong, just nuke as hard as they could to get by the waves. And that was a strategy I went with. And once I get to the dragon, so I had everybody set up in a speed tune in a perfect order of uh, the composition to execute the run as consistently as possible. So that's how I have it built. So one thing I do want to mention is, why am I not using Lydia or Coldart, you might wonder? Well, the problem is they got banned from my faction. Those are the two champions I'm not allowed to use on my faction. So it changed a lot of things, but I mean, I still had Zavia and Kale, so I was good to go. So one thing that our uh, run had to consist of was we had a max player power of 350,000 for five champions on our team. So I had to, um, I guess right before the battle or the when we went live for the final uh, showing, I had to scramble because I accidentally min-maxed a bunch of my champions and I went over the player power cap. So I got kind of screwed and with like 5 to 10 minutes remaining, I had to scramble and just, just take gear off of people and try to get in that 350,000 uh, player power range. So we got just under that and I actually had to strip uh, my Lua who was actually putting out a lot more attack but it didn't make too much of a difference because I, I, after I stripped a bunch of champions, I had to uh, do a couple runs just to see if it worked out well. And it still worked out pretty well. So I was pretty happy with the results. And okay, so I'm going to show you the team now. So the team that I used was Mithrala. She does a lot of poisons on the A1 and it's a 100% chance to land. She also puts out AoE Hex, which is huge. And surprisingly, she also does a lot of damage because I built her in damage so I can try to burn down the waves as fast as possible but she's also bringing up defense up as well as attack up and the attack up is immense because that's giving us a lot of damage to output right and that was pretty much all I really use her for I didn't care about the a3 at all and for the masteries here is how I built so I did have her in war master instead of helm smasher or uh, flawless execution because I wanted to because um, I knew she was going to be taking a lot of turns with A1 against the dragon boss and I wanted to try to put out as much damage as I could on that. Try to maximize my damage. So this is the gear I have her wearing and I did have a ring on her but as I said earlier I actually had to take off the ring because I had way too much player power. So here is how I have her built and her speed is at 170. I originally had her at 6000 defense I think but like I said I had a stripper. So 5300 defense. Um, she is based off of defense damage so... 100% uh, crit rate, I try to crit cap as much as I could, 267 crit damage, and uh, 235 accuracy is really more than enough for uh, Dragon 20, which is what I competed in. So that's all I wanted to try to get to, but I mean, the more the merrier. And on to the next champion I worked with was Zavia, 
she was the core of my team basically and so i originally had her built in relentless set and i actually took it off because i think from mithrala as well yeah so i had them both built in a relentless set and those extra turns weren't really working out for me the way i wanted it to so i try to go for a more consistent tuned like completely tuned team i try to min max and tune everything as to the to a t basically and it was as good as i could have gotten i think i don't know i tried my best but so yeah so that's my zavia um again i took off the rail list because i didn't want it to go multiple times so ever going right after the mithrala because for the first wave she's going to be nuking right after the um the mithrala goes with the hexes and she's at 168 speed crit capped and 243 crit damage and as much attack as i can get on her i'm just trying to build her in a lot of damage uh more than enough accuracy here and so she's going to be putting out a lot of poisons with their a1 and she's also going to be putting out a lot of poisons with their a2 as well as her most important ability here to nuke down the boss is her explosion so the poison uh i guess the detonator right so this is the biggest um thing i guess i use from zavia as well as uh dark kill but i'll get to him in a moment and also this was huge as well the aura for attack um all battles in 33 percent so this was really really important and for the masteries that I used was, so for her, I went with Helm Smasher. I tried to do as much damage as I could because the waves were the biggest hurdle for me. And onto the next champion is Ray. So Ray, I tried to build as strong as I possibly could while trying to stay under the player power. So I have her built in Savage and she's going to be my, my main source of nuke against the wave one and wave two. So I have her prioritizing A2, which is her um, her nuke ability here. So after the Mithrala goes with the Hexes, I have her going right after the Zavia, and she's going to be doing 50% more damage to the targets because they're all under debuffs. So it was a huge nuke ability that um, allowed me to go by the ways really, really quickly. And I know she's a, a little bit over crit damage, uh, I guess too much crit damage here, but... It's actually pretty damage efficient because I'm getting an attack up from Mithrala and I'm also getting the attack aura from Zavia. So this worked out pretty well as well. And onto the next champion and also the speed. I forgot to mention that. The speed is at 120 and so you might think the speed is a little slow, right? My idea with this team composition was I wanted to try to make the team as slow as possible because I'm running a poison uh, focused team and I wanted to make sure the the dragon goes before I do because the, the poisons are going to tick and that's going to be a lot more damage to let it die faster. So I had her built in this speed right here and this was like the perfect speed I found for her. Um, anywhere between like 110 to like 130-ish was fine and this is the speed I have her at though. But I just wanted to make sure she didn't get too many turns in at certain points, less possible turns against the dragons as well. And yeah, while doing a lot of damage. All right, so Lua. I want to talk about Lua. So originally when I had the team composition, I went with four champions for a while. I was trying out other champions too, like uh, Foley, Painkeeper, um, the, the Rule. So the Rule I didn't go with because it's bad affinity to begin with. And I just wanted to make sure I had a consistent team while being really, really fast as well, rather than like an RNG based team, because we only get three shots to um i guess three runs in to get the team done so it didn't really work out with the rule for me and so i opted out with him and for the lua i wanted a, a another champion that had really fast animation that didn't do any melee abilities because those take off a lot of time on the timer right it adds up seconds so i wanted a fast animation champion that does a lot of damage that can help clear out the wave too so that is what lua's job here is for and also does, does a decent amount of damage on the boss if I can land a defense down ahead. But I did have her originally at 7k attack, I believe. And it was okay, but like I said, I ran out of uh, the PP space, the player power space, so I had to start stripping uh, her. And it just it still worked out well. She still helped out a lot with the wave 2 clear. And the wave 3, um, the, the damage against the boss was not that bad. But that's how, it, uh, that's how I have her built. So I just made sure she has Savage set. And she's not really damage efficient here, but um, like I said, I, was, I had no time. I had to just scramble uh, together whatever I could at the last second. And this is the Masters I have her on her. Champion here is Dark Kale. So the gear doesn't really matter here as far as a regeneration set. 
um so he was originally what i was starting with like to keep him alive only and everybody else that but didn't work out so the gear is i kind of just left it the way it was because it was fine so all i really focused on was getting some damage on him as much as i could and getting a decent amount of accuracy and making sure he's really really slow and that's pretty much it that's all i really focus on and his job is huge because he's going to be putting out a lot of poisons right here right three poisons along with the poison sensitivity which is huge and also he's going to be increasing the duration of all debuffs by one turn which is massive really really massive once i have all those poisons on the boss really huge and for the a1 really really nice as well triple hitter he can uh, activate the poisons basically detonate and it's really really nice dark hill was also an mvp along with Zavia. for the masteries i haven't built with Warmaster. all right so that is pretty much the composition here and I do want to show you the run now, so let's get over to it. So this is the team I ran, and we were on stage 20 for the run for the events. We had to do stage 20 dragons, and we were also limited by a FPS cap at 60, because not everybody has a really fast computer, and it's just to keep it the competition, I guess, uh, equal or fair. So we were at capped at 60, so what that means is there's a huge difference between being capped at 60 FPS and unlimited FPS. So the difference of that is about 10 to 15 seconds because when you're unlimited FPS, you have a lot more frames and everything is going a lot faster. When you're capped at 60, it's a lot slower. So when we're capped at 60 FPS, the best time I came up with on my testing was 45 seconds. That was the best time I came up with. And when we went live on stream, the best time I got was 50 seconds. That's the time I won with. And when we were on unlimited though, my best time I ever gotten, and this was not counted towards a competition, this was just for fun, but uh, during my testing, it was 38 sec 37 seconds, 38 seconds. That was the best time I came up with, with unlimited FPS on this run. So that is pretty much it though. So I do want to show you the run. This is actually on unlimited FPS right now. So you'll actually see. So this is basically the best potential in terms of time. So once I had the core of the composition, the biggest thing that was fine tuning as far as the... Um, what made it difficult was the presets. So the presets, I had to get all the orders correct as much as I could. And this is pretty much how I was set up here. For, so for this run here, I opted to use the A3 first on Zavia because she does a lot of damage with the AOE hit. And it's enough to clear, which is a Zavia, Mithrala, and the Ray. And I wanted to save the poison rain for the wave two. And once I get to the wave three, I had to set up in a way where she'll get it back. And by the time she has to go. So that is a save for that in wave two. Um, like I said, I use it there. I ignored this because I wanted to save her for wave three. And wave three, I have this position to go first, but I have this to go as priority. So A1 is going first, and then I get my poison rain back and I go with this. And then I end the run with this, the wave three, which is the nuke. And for the Mithrala, we focus on the A2, which is the AOE hit. Does a lot of damage with the hex as well with the attack up. And for the wave two, we went with the, so for the A2, she already used it, but I still had it on priority um, just in case she had to get it back at some point if uh, the run fails or does really bad on the wave two. But she does the A A1 multiple times. And once I get to the A3 or the round three, the A2 and A3 is not what I want to use. It's just the poisons that I want on the dragon. And onto the kill, we have him only using the A1 because that's his fastest animation. And I don't need this to be used at all it's on the wave one. And the wave two, same thing. I don't need to be used. I don't need to use this at all because I need to save it for the dragon fight. So he's using A1 only. And once I get to the dragon, he's going to prioritize using his poisons, the poison sensitivity, and then he's going to be uh, increasing the duration of all the debuffs. And then that's pretty much it. So basically for her, she she's not taking a turn at all for the wave one because the wave one's always getting nuked down immediately. And for the round two, I turned off the lucky shot because I wanted to use this against the dragon because that's her strongest ability here for the dragon. And basically for this right here, I needed to use that for the wave two to help with the AOE damage because the wave two was the most difficult obstacle. Um, once I got to the dragon, it was cakewalk. Once the once I got to the wave one, it was cakewalk. The wave two is the biggest hurdle. And onto the wave three or the round three, uh, I open with the lucky shot and that's pretty much it. And for the ray, for the ray, she is going to be our primary nuke. So she's going to be clearing out the wave one with their A2. Again, it does extra damage when they're under debuffs with the hex as well. So again, with the A2, she's doing additional damage because they're all under hex and because of her ability right here, it says additional 50% more damage and it just sh it shreds. And onto the wave two, 
I wanted to try to get this out again if I had it available, if it gets to it. And basically, I wanted to make sure I wanted to freeze everybody on the team if possible. And the best chance I have is 75% chance with the um, the snipe um, for the mastery. So I try to focus on getting the frozen down on all the champions if possible, because the less turns that they take, the less animations in the run. And ideally, I needed to freeze the Tyrell and the Apothecary, because once they get a turn, it's the the Tyrell is really, really tanky. The Apothecary, he has a speed up ability or the filter meters, and he also has a heal. So um, getting them frozen was is the most ideal for me in, in that case scenario. And that's pretty much it there. So once I get to the wave three, it doesn't really matter. Whatever she has available, I use. So the freeze and the A2, it doesn't really matter because she doesn't really get to use them again. And so she's basically just using this right here. I think she actually does use the wave two again or the A2. Yeah, I think she does. But the defense down is not 100%. But if I could get it down on the dragon on the first go, then my Lua can do additional damage. So that's the idea there. But I wanted to make sure she got as low as possible turns because I don't really need her in there to take turns. Yeah, so that's pretty much the run there. And I do want to show you the run now. So here we go. So again, my best possible time is 37, 38 seconds. And if everything goes right, and I think if every, no, actually, if everything goes right, I think I can do about 35 seconds on stage 20. So here we go. Hopefully it goes well here, right? Hopefully. Oh, it's on, uh, oh, okay. So we're going to lose a little bit of time there because of the, um, it was on A1 or uh, one time speed instead of two time speed. So clean wave clear there on wave one. And now we're on wave two and we want to make sure we freeze the apothecary. Okay, perfect. Everybody got froze. Ooh, they're going to get a turn. Yeah, so we lost a little bit of time there because of the animation. So the Tyrell is the tankiest here, and he's always the hardest to get down. All right, clean there. And I, I think there's going to be around 42 seconds. Okay, so everything is clean right now. Perfect. Everything's going really clean. Okay, this might be actually a fast run. 42 seconds. Yeah, just what I imagined. Okay, 43 seconds. I was off by one second. So 43 seconds is a run that I got there. And let's do it again. I want to see if I can get a better time. I want to see if I can get 37 seconds. That would be the dream. So the wave one is always... Well, actually, it was technically 40. Ooh, bad run. It was technically 41 seconds because you lost the time there, right? On the wave one when I had it on one time speed. Okay, everybody's frozen. This is ideal. And I do need to focus the Tyrell because he's always tanky. Okay, beautiful. Now we can attack the apothecary here. Okay, that should have been clean. I, that's a little unfortunate. But hopefully this goes really clean. We missed the um, the poisons there from Zavia. Unfortunate. Okay, we got the defense down. Okay, beautiful. More poisons. Beautiful. Okay, we got the increased duration. And this should be clean. 40 seconds. Beautiful. There we go. 40 seconds. It was a really fun time. I really enjoyed the event. And I really... Um, Appreciate Deadwood Jedi for putting this event together. And yeah, there you go, guys. That is just an option for you from only using uh, Dark Elves. And if you're wondering, why am I not using Lydia or Cold Art? Well, the thing is, Lydia and Cold Art were banned. They were banned from my faction. So I, were, I was not able to use Lydia or the Cold Art, which would have been massive, right? So there you have it, guys. Just to give you an idea of a fast run you can do, even without Kaimar. Because if you have Kaimar, it changes everything. You can do massive speed runs. But even without a camera, we were able to do about 40 seconds on average. So, so there you have it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you enjoy my content in general, please make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next video.